Cardia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Three speakers, uh, two of whom we know from previous speak, uh, talks that were really, really popular. Our second speaker will be Patrick Mattermore on Can the Press Be Objective? And he gave a wonderful talk that was really popular. And I always say the most impressive talks are talks where people actually do something as a result of that talk. And Pascal falls into that category. He gave a talk on uh, better nutrition, et etc. And it was, I know I went there and I bought some magnesium oil to put on my skin because he said, you know, magnesium is more easily absorbed through the skin. So uh, d down the front, there's plenty of seats down the front because this is like a church. People want to sit up the back. We've got a very big crowd today. I, I have to tell you this little story. I have a friend coming and he said, I said, the talks are on aquaponics. And he said, what's aquaponics? And I said, come to the talk and you'll find out. Okay? So he's here to find out about aquaponics. And on that note, may I say, welcome and uh, vous or whatever the word is. Come up and uh, come and get, enlighten us about aquaponics. By the way, quickly, did anybody go to Pascal's uh, Health Hut as a result of the talk besides me, as a result of the talk? I know Brad did another, yeah. It actually caused action by people to increase their health. So this is a very interesting subject, aquaponics, uh, an alternative. Well, I'll let them tell you all about it. So welcome. Come on up. This is Pascal and his partner in crime, Regis Vincent. Regis, yes. Thank you. Working good? Bonjour. <laughs> good morning. Uh, yeah, I need that. Yeah. Thank you. So this morning uh, I'll be more quiet than last time. Yes. <laughs> uh, to me it's quite new, aquaponics. About uh, a year ago, uh, before I introduce my partner, I'll tell you a little bit about me for those who don't know me. So I'm the owner of Health Hut, a health food shop that we are making organic uh, gluten-free and uh, vegan food uh, down to Pattaya Klang. But I do that for already a nutrition coach for 30 years. It's my passion. And when I met Regis the first time was uh, in a party in his house and he let us try some uh, vegetables and I was uh, impressed by the quality. And then uh, I discovered that he, he did aquaponics. Aquaponics, uh, never heard about that term. And then later on, uh, I was really interested, and we start to talk how we can work together. And that's what now we are doing. So I would like to first, uh, if you can see on that flyer, on that slide, that actually aquaponics tick all the boxes of uh, what is matter today, and especially solving the main food global issue. Just talking about vegetables during 2021, the prices of vegetables has raised 25%, so it's a very huge uh, concern. It's a high growth market, sustainable and self-sufficient. It's also very important nowadays. Low carbon footprint, low water consumption, high profits for those who think about running a farm, positive impact on communities, and a well-experienced project operator talking about AHA, the company that I will introduce uh, very soon. So what is aquaponics? First, uh, it's referred to the combination of uh, fish uh, culture and uh, the cultivation of plants hydroponically. Hydroponically means on water. But don't confuse with hydroponics which is very common and uh, even popular if you go to any supermarket, you will find salad, lettuce, vegetables in a bag and it's called hydroponics, right? I think you are familiar with that term. We can talk a lot about this because actually, uh, from my point of view, it's not that healthy, 
but <laughs> we will talk about it a little bit later. The second thing we can say is uh, the system, the aquaponic system, just replicates the uh, same natural ecosystem found in rivers and ponds. So we just replicate this in the nature. What fish doing is they feed the plants and the bacteria convert fish waste into nutrients on which plants grow. Because that's the key difference between hydroponics and aquaponics, that uh, hydroponics not have natural fertilizer, right? So they have to add the chemical in the water in order to feed the plants. With the aquaponics, we will use the fish waste, like in an organic soil farming, we use the cow uh, waste or horse, you know? And that's exactly what uh, we're doing with the fish waste here. And you can see the cycle of uh, the aquaponic. First, the fish produce waste, and then the nature make the job, creating microbes and worms that convert the waste fertilizer into fertilizer for plants. Then the plants filter the water that return to the fish. So it's a closed system. And by the way, thanks to that, we're using only 5% uh, of the water that you use for organic uh, farming. So in order to both fish and plants to live and grow in harmony, the, the symbiotic environment sorry, must be kept natural and nasty harmful pesticide kept away. Actually, this is a guarantee for you, the consumer, if you know it as aquaponics, you can close your eyes and buy. Because what happens if you use chemical in the plants, for example, pesticides, right? You will kill the fish. If you treat the fish with some medicine or drugs, that you will uh, destroy the plants. So actually, you can't use harmful pesticides in an aquaponic environment. So it's a continuous production process. Harvest fish and veggies every day, all year long. This is another thing also with the uh, aquaponics, especially if you have uh, a closed system, like in a greenhouse, and you control not only the temperature of the air, but also the water, and then you can plan exactly what you want to grow. You can really plan like you want that lettuce every week, that kind of tomato every week. It's not, a, it's not like the organic uh, soil farming. Guests at two hotels Oops, in Singapore stop. may soon get to enjoy food. Yeah, that's the problem when we have the click. I forgot to say to Brad, I, I prefer the other. OK, I go down. It is a video that introduces what we're doing, actually. And one of our famous installation system in Singapore at the rooftop of the Fairmont Hotel next to the Swiss hotel. They have a, a huge area, and they decide to grow aquaponics there. So I don't know if I can go down. Yeah. And now it should start if I do. Guests at two hotels in Singapore may soon get to enjoy food grown at the hotel's garden. The Fairmont and Swiss hotel, the Stamford, is providing that farm. It's a Singapore's first aquaponics garden within a hotel. Aquaponics, it combines growing aquatic life and plants with no soil required, so fish and vegetables grow together. Waste from fish is converted to nitrates that fertilize the vegetables. In turn, the roots of the plants act as filters to clean the water for the fish. In this 450 square meters of space, vegetables are harvested within weeks. We take a seed and we put it inside. Okay, and then we drop it into this little cup here where there's a little square slot. Okay, so we leave it in there. In about two weeks, it will look, it will look something like this. Okay, and uh, we can harvest it in about four weeks. Mr. Salam added that 18,000 plants could potentially be housed here. Eventually, this garden will produce 30% of the vegetables and 10% of the fish for the hotels each month. And certain types of vegetables will be fully produced here. 
At the moment we use about 350 to 400 kilos of lettuce uh, every month, um, so that will also be able to produce from the garden on level 5. Uh, and then also we're growing a different variety of uh, micro herbs and micro cresses which we will also use and sustain within the, the garden such as the Japanese pentas which we use to garnish. It was General Manager Marcus Henna who kick-started the initiative. From a uh, sustainability point of view, it's, it ticks the box. It, our carbon footprint is reduced, the plastic is reduced that's coming into the building, and our guests are getting a phenomenal product. Through the garden, Mr. Hanna also wants the hotels to engage guests on sustainable food production. I'm indeed glad to see that your eco journey continues with the launch of this aquaponics farm. I hope your efforts will inspire other industry players to join us on this journey towards sustainable development. Dr. Carr also encouraged these other players to bring food production closer to the community and to raise awareness of supporting local produce. Okay, so this is uh, something that quite interesting. You will understand easily that uh, in our market, I will talk a little bit later, one of our main market are the restaurants, hotel, and uh, professional in, in food like that. So this is, uh, now we can talk about the benefits of aquaponics. I say already, oh, I don't know why, that's some, um, Brad, a point of view on you, but okay, I go too fast. Yeah, that's what really attracted me uh, at the first sight. It was the quality. As I said before, when I saw a few years ago the first hydroponic salad coming on the market, I was really interested because, as you maybe know, if you don't know, I'll tell you now, 69% of vegetables and fruits on the Thai market are full of pesticides and fertilizers. Even the organic contain 50% of them containing pesticides. Well, in Thailand we don't have a, a, an official organic certificate. It's up to the people to claim I am organic. But in fact, I was quite, uh, let's say, uh, skeptical about the quality of hydroponic because if you put the chemical on the water to feed the plants, how can I tell you that? I would prefer to buy a salad from Macro with a lot of pesticide on it, but grow from the soil, because I know if I use baking soda and white vinegar, I can get rid of a large amount of these chemicals by myself. But if now I put the chemicals in the water and goes in the roots of the plant, where do you think it goes? within the cell of the plant, right? So you can't get rid of. So that's really the biggest difference. This is the, the quality, so the healthiest and freshest possible product. It produces tasty and healthy food. But also, if you want to get an organic certified salad today, you go to, let's say, Villa Market, quite famous for having a lot of organic product, and you will buy that Australian salad with the USDA certificate. Great. But then, as you, as you know, there was nine hours to fly to Australia huh, around. <laughs> so your salad was harvested, let's say, that day, and then have to be stored and to be packed with azote, and then take the flight, coming to the warehouse from, let, let's say, Tesco Lotus, whatever, and then go on the shelf another day. So your salad already a few days before you can eat it, right? Have you heard about nutrients depletion? So the salad looks the same, tastes the same, but in terms of micronutrients, nothing left, or not nothing, but not the same amount that when you eat within minutes after the harvest, and that's what you can do with aquaponics, because what we plan to do is have local farm everywhere in Thailand. Bam! <laughs> so it produces where food is consumed. It also provides the essential nutrients that our body needs. 
uh, that's an obsession also what we have in our shop is the same everything we are selling we are producing uh, has one goal to provide as much as possible the essential nutrients that the body need the body machine needs right and Aquaponics provide not only the vitamin and minerals or amino acids from the plants, but also good fats and protein from the fish. So it's a complete nutritional uh, course. And then it's not in, it's not finished. You can, we can talk about environment friendly because the the plants consume every gram of waste produced by the fish. Nothing is rejected in the environment. So as I told you before, it uses only 5% of the water used in the soil. Therefore, it's totally safe. It, as I said also before, it does not welcome any harmful pesticides. Okay. But it also reduces pests since uh, aquaponic does not uh, require soil, it reduces the presence of kinds of critters that can compromise your crops. Okay, what can I grow in my aquaponic farm? Actually, you can grow anything you want, but let's say some plants are more suitable than others. So, you can have these, um, I think, the, the I forgot to there was a delay between, okay, any kind of lettuce and green vegetables first, this common sense, but also <coughs> maybe the battery is off, no? Um, down, I mean. Finer herbs. I got the best rosemary, <laughs> for example, in the aquaponic farm. The tomatoes. Tomatoes are amazing. I think the last tomatoes like that I ate was in 1986 in Sicilia, Italy. Uh, because since we have these uh, beautiful tomatoes, all the same, you know, clone, you know, from Holland. Uh, the Dutch are very clever to, to make uh, this uh, hydroponic and cloning. It's, it's nice in a way, but there was no taste. It's just water. But this is real tomato. And mint and even Cannabis, we can grow everything. So to introduce now, uh, and the company and my partner, I will just uh, want you to read the motto of uh, the company, which is from Regis Mind and ID, the vision. We believe everyone should have access to healthy food grown naturally and brought to the end user with a minimum carbon footprint. We trust Mother Nature, we are engineers. And that's really the key also. Aquaponic is not only uh, aquaculture, agriculture, fish culture. If you do not uh, add the engineer, uh, engineering, then you can't succeed. And that's why we have a, a lot of, uh, we are very lucky uh, that Resist is also an engineer. That's why probably the company is so successful now. Let me introduce my partner, Regis Vincent, for the next part. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Regis Vincent. And um, indeed, I'm the creator, founder of Aquaponics Hardware Asia. We created that company in uh, 2015. And the idea came actually from a friend of mine I met uh, when I was working in Oman. His, his name is Jean-Yves Mevel. He's a, he's a um, an person doing aquaculture. He's designing uh, systems and equipment for aquaculture. And he was explaining to me that the, the major problem that they have in aquaculture is to treat the waste from the fish. Uh, as Pascal explained in nature, the, the fish waste are converted in bacteria and plants grow from that. So he was doing some, some research and, uh, on, on, on what he called aquaponics. I've never heard that term before, but he was explaining me all this. And, and then that idea, he seeded that idea in my mind in 2005 and in 2015 I decided to go further with that idea. Um, then uh, we, we 
created AHA and uh, move on. The vision, as Pascal said, was knowing all what he's been explaining before, the, you know, the, the, the food manufacturing industry is getting saturated. We have no other choice than using harmful pesticide fertilizer to produce so that everybody can eat. So we take from granted today we're going to get food in the supermarket every day, but we don't know. So the, the vision was to, to give ev everyone good food on the planet. The, the mission was to create some tools for everybody to, to achieve this. So that's, that's what we did with, uh, uh, un until now. Uh, we created equipment, we, we learned about the process, uh, about aquaponics, we learned a lot from, from other people in the internet, we learned a lot, uh, but we, we, we revalidated everything that we did. So we came to master the aquaponic pro process, uh, and, and then, so that's, that's what we do now, we, we've experienced a lot, we know how to do it. And uh, we've been designing equipment because during that, that, um, that, during all these years, we found out that there was a lot of equipment that were not available on the market to do this. So the photo you see there is a farm that we have in Kuala Lumpur now. And the, um, the vegetables are distributed in supermarket under the Ahaponics brand. Uh, we continuously, obviously, uh, I mean, our research in a company has not stopped. We continue do doing that re regularly. And uh, we, we not only offer equipment for commercial units, like the picture you have there, but we also use exactly the same equipment to for anybody who wants to have a small system in their ba backyard. So that's pretty much what, what AHA does, and uh, I will go in the next few slides uh, explaining you how we got there. So in 2015, I was living in Bangkok, and uh, I was starting doing some experiment, uh, some a first set of lab. The photo you have there on the left side is, uh, is the fourth version of it. Uh, trying to find out what's the best, the best way uh, for, for plant to grow in an aquaponic media. It's different than hydroponic. In hydroponic, you have a little bit of water because you fertilize the water with chemical. So the more water you have, the more chemical you need to use. In aquaponics, is the opposite. Uh, we, the, the bacteria needs a large volume of water, the fish as well. And that makes the system very sta stable. It also uh, makes the, uh, the, the media different. We don't use like the small pipe that they use in hydroponic, we use large volume tank and that's what we have been designing for during all these years. In the meantime, in 2016, uh, uh, my colleague and friend Dev Devayanti, Deva was, uh, pa is, is passionate about aquaponics as well, she lives in Balipapan in Indonesia, and she was also doing some study on, on aquaponics. So as I said, we learned a lot from people, but we revalidated everything practically. We have a very extensive knowledge of practical aquaponics. And then after two years of uh, experimenting, we built that farm in Pak Chong, uh, near, I mean, on, on the way to Kaoyai. That farm was operated from 2017, 18, 19. At the end of 19, we closed it because the, they were building the highway, uh, Korat uh, hi Highway, that uh, passed about between 10 and 15 meters from the greenhouse, so we couldn't decently produce uh, Org organic or better than organic type of ve vegetable in such environment. So that's when we, we actually, but we, we learn a lot du during those three years, we learn a lot in that farm. Uh, commercial aquaponic is completely different than domestic aquaponics. The system you use is, we, I mean, we, we use the same, the same uh, type of equipment, but they are configured completely differently. Uh, so we moved to that farm, which I've, I mean, we, in, in 2019, we created that, that farm. The first version of that farm, uh, this was actually in a, in a greenhouse in Kuala Lumpur that, was, that is provided by the, the, the Malaysian government. Uh, they had two greenhouses. One, I mean, the one, one of them wa was used by some, some, uh, some people doing aquaponics there, but a different way. And uh, the other green, greenhouse was not used, so the government said, you can use it, show us what you can do. And after one year of o operation, 
the government in Malaysia came back to us and they said, okay, we're going to remove the front unit and we want you to build the same system to expand uh, towards, uh, I mean, to using the two greenhouses. So that's what we have now. They were very pleased, very impressed with what we did. On the same, uh, sa it's the same style and the I mean, same, same thing than the video that you saw on the Singapore thing. Um, so, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, so, I don't know if that's fish system, but did, di oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Hello, okay. Okay, the video doesn't, doesn't start, but it's fine. This, this is another, yes. So this, di this is, you, 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 you can see this, uh, how, how we build the aquaponics. In a, in a commercial aquaponics, we have large fish tanks. We have about uh, three, four, f up to yeah, up to four thousand fish in in a farm, uh, and and then we use these uh, green beds to uh, to to grow the plants. So that's obviously two systems completely separated. We have the fish on one side and the uh, ve vegetable on the other side. Uh, so as a company. Uh, we've been working on two two fronts, I would say. the the first The first was to uh, on on the top here, the, this green green side, I, is to to learn and and improve the way we do the farms. So we started in 2016, as I said, and and then we've been sending equipment uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of places now. Not only in, in th Thailand, but in Malaysia, uh, we've uh, we've sent equipment to India. We have farm in India. We have farm in New Zealand. We have farm in uh, in Singapore, obviously, and uh, we just sent one uh, at the end of last year to U Ukraine. Some people over there, some friend of mine, wanted to uh, feed some refugees during during the war, so I sent some equipment to to him over there. And we are we are expanding on these farm things. So, and then on, on the other side, we were working on equipment because we didn't find any ready-made equipment to, to achieve the, to, 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 to have a, an, an optimized growth process in aquaponics. So we decided what we, we created what we call the MIT, the Modular Infinity Tank. It's a piece of a, a tank the, that can be uh, used, uh, it's, it's like a Lego. So you can use this and, and assemble it the way you want to build line as long as you want. Uh, so we did the generation one prototype, generation two, the first pilot series in, in 2018, and, and then uh, in 2019 we 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 up, we. Uh, we had the generation five with some improvement. Uh, sorry, the generation four and generation five came in 2021 with the addition of of, uh, of a wicking tray. In the meantime, we also developed an application to uh, understand or to model the aquaponics balance. Uh, a lot of questions we have is how many fish we need for how many plants, how we design a system, how we, we optimize the, the system. So I, I've created this, this, uh, this application called Ceres, and it it's computes that b balance, but not only that, it computes also the, uh, the energy consumption, the hydraulic requirement, uh, how much water we need to flow, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and the economics. What is the return on investment of that farm, et cetera. So we created all that, all that all these uh, pr products are, are now used within the, the com company to design farms and domestic system. The MIT is the backbone of what we do, of what, uh, of, of, uh, what we do at AHA. Uh, we use it, as I said, on the, like, like a brick, a and we use it to, to, to build the, the lines that you, you saw in the previous slides where we grow the v v vegetable. And in a domestic system, we use it also uh, to host the fish. So it it's can act as a fish tanks for small system, or as a plant growing media in a big system. It can be stacked, so we can have uh, an MIT on top of an MIT to grow to have either fish under or to have plants to grow plants on two layers. Can be three la layers if we wanted to. So. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big uh, believer in a vertical farming, but I'm a big believer in a stackable uh, si system in aquaponics. Vertical farming is great in hydroponics, but not in aquaponics. 
coming next slides. Okay. So we also, uh, as I said, we, we, we looked at every piece of equipment available on the market, and if it was not optimized, we optimized it. So we, create, we created this pot. Uh, it's designed to host, uh, it's, it's designed specifically for aquaponics. It can hold the, the, the sponge block if we use some. It can receive some uh, fine me media. So we, we can grow any kind of plants or herbs in that pot. And we also developed last year a, a, a special tray that fits inside the MIT. And that tray is used to grow some, some plants that likes media, like cooking herbs. Uh, you know, some, some plants can grow in just the w water, like they do in, in hydroponic. But some plants need a media. And we use that uh, that tray for for that. We also use that tray to in the in the production process where we want to optimize the space. So that that uh, that tray can host a lot of pots when the plants are small, and when the plants get bigger, we move them into the production line with giving them more space between the pots. The modeling so software, as I said, is designed to, uh, we, we use it when we design uh, farms. So we don't, when we design a farm, when we, when we build a farm, we don't go bl blindly. We have years of experience on the production, how much we can produce for each type of plant per square meter uh, per month. So we can really have a good grasp on on the on the return on investment of that farm. We also know the consumption, electricity consumption, water ex ex water consumption, ex etc. Uh, fish food requirement. So that software computes all this b balance. So we're not we're not blind. So when we built a unit, we talk with, uh, I mean, we, we look at the layout we have because there's no, there's no two greenhouses of the same size, so it's always a customized design. So we design the layout, uh, we discuss with the people. That example is the farm that we built in Singapore that you saw on the video. So they had a triangle shape, so we designed a unit that fit on a triangle shape, and we make sure the hydraulic works well in that, uh, in that shape. We use uh, Ceres to compute the b balance, how it was the size of fish tanks we need for the quantity of, for the, for the production that they were tar targeting. And as I said in the video, they have 11 restaurants in that group, the, the Swiss Hotel, Fairmont Hotel, and Raffle Hotels. And uh, this, that, that farm is feeding 35 to 40% of the vegetable requirement that they have when they work full blast. So we designed that uh, based on this, and on this re requirement. Then we went there, we execute, we commissioned the unit, we train the people. It's important in a, if just not create a, I mean, build, build a unit, but we want to have the people fully proficient in operating it. Uh, then we coach them because they, we train them, but they understand they, uh, there's still something they don't remember. So we coach them re regularly every month. And we continue helping them with the maintenance, and it's like a companionage. We, we, we accompany them through the, the aquaponic experience journey, and we do that with every customer. And we're developing uh, right now uh, also a, a, a farm ma ma management app. That farm will, uh, that management app will really help to to manage the production of the farm and anticipate uh, what needs to be seeded uh, based on the production that we 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 will require in the in the upcoming few few months. So that's what. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you saw what we can do commercially. Uh, a lot of people are interested to have the, an aquaponic system in their backyard, in their balcony, in the for themselves. Uh, so yeah, you can grow it for the community, but you can grow it for yourself. And we have a whole set of of uh, of, of equipment using the M MIT. We we have a different uh, configuration, uh, small size, big size, uh, like a family set can feed an entire. Fa fa family, the Optimus is for people who want even more than that. So you can just have a kit like that, it, it comes, there's no piping outside, there's no specific skill required to assemble it, a six-year-old kit can, can do it. And uh, you can get up with your aquaponics uh, fun uh, in about three, four hours after you start installation. So that's, that's the idea, trying to promote aquaponics to everyone, accomplish our vision. Um, 
um, sorry. That's all. I will. Uh, yes, yeah. That's that's your next slides. I will uh, pass that on to Pascal. We'll go through uh, next few slides on the what we do, what what we will do in the future. Merci. Thank you, Regis. He will come back because the FAQ session is for him, not for me. He knows better than me. Thank you. Please. <laughs> well, uh, some just a few words about what we're going to do here in Thailand now. So we keep doing research and development. This is crucial uh, for our customers. Like uh, I was mentioning before, cannabis, it's something new for us. We, so we're going to uh, learn how to grow that uh, wonderful plant because it's a specific plant. But also we have people who want finer herbs for some uh, restaurants. And yeah, we always uh, conduct all kinds of experiment. The sales, as uh, Regis just told you, who are our customers? Of course, the commercial units are the number one target because uh, already for seven years now, Regis has the experience of that field. But as you can see the, the slide before, we are starting now the domestic units, and it's going very um, exciting. So I tell you now, because uh, last week in another meeting, people asked me uh, straight away, how much, how much, how much? So we have unit from about 70,000 baht up to 200,000 baht in a domestic unit. And then uh, you can have an idea. But of course, if you're really interested, we have uh, several ways um, to give you all the information you need. I'll come back to that. And now the global, because it's uh, the support or the technical support is a crucial part, as you probably understand. So our next step is to create in Thailand a model to set up uh, very soon a franchise system. So if someone in another country wants to develop uh, aquaponics, then he can uh, apply as a franchisee. And then we will provide all the training, but also a technical support in on-site. And then uh, he can start the business in any country. So that's the next level for uh, our company. So now I would like to introduce our project of urban farm in Parea. So this idea, of course, is based on an example. Example because it depends the land we will find, the place. But you have, uh, we, we, we have two projects, actually, depending the size of the land, to set up an urban farm. So you can see the 700 square meter single farm urban. This one will contain about 2,400 fish, and it will produce 1,300 kilo of plants, with, uh, and around 270 kilo of fish every single month. So it could be nice for people who want to just drive in and pick up some fresh aquaponic plants or lettuce. In, um, in the larger farm, if we have space, we really want to add not only the farm, but a community to create a community. So for information, education, uh, meeting with the school, for example, to explain also to the new generation how we can grow uh, vegetables in a healthy way and to make aquaponics more popular and restaurant health food shop let's say a healthy people community I don't know if yeah as you can see uh, we can use the same size of land but on two stories and then obviously we double the production so whether we have a larger land to put a larger uh, farm or a smaller land but on two story, we can reach up to 2,600 kilo of plants monthly, which is quite exciting. For this project, we are looking for investors. So you will probably be, we have already some people show a lot of interest about it. So for those who are interested, we would like to bring you to our lab. Our lab is located in Pong municipality, about 25 kilometers from here, near the Paraya Country Club um, uh, golf course. 
And then you will see uh, our lab, which is about 100 square meter, where we grow any kind of plant. And then we can have a conversation about the uh, project. Now, it's the question session. I will let you with my partner, Regis, because of course he can answer better than me <laughs> of all these questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pascal. Okay, I thought it was interesting. What? <laughs> okay, the, the optimum depth for growing plants. Good question. When I said I revalidated everything I learned from what I heard from people, I heard 20 centimeters, I heard 60. Some people said uh, the deeper the better. What, uh, what we believe is about 30, 30 some centimeters, 30, right? The reason is if you have a, a, a lot of space uh, between the roots and the bottom, right? You pump water on one side, uh, the water will obviously go through the easiest path hydraulically and then pass under, your plants will not see the, the nu nutrients. So w there, there is an optimum space in just for, for, that, uh, for the, the, the nutrients to reach the roots of the plants. And, uh, and also an optimum space in terms of, uh, of, of weight. Because one of the main issues that uh, we, 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 we deal with, especially in urban farming, where, where we install farms on rooftops or on B buildings. The buildings have generally a limitation of 400 kilograms per square m meter, so we cannot have too much w water too. So optimally 20, 25 to thir thir 35. Yeah. Um, there are a number of defunct, derelict, uh, broken swimming pools. Can swimming pools be used for aquaponics? I wouldn't do that. I mean, uh, we've been trying to use fish ponds, uh, you know, pump water from fish ponds, but there is, it's, I mean, the, the, the aquaponics balance is quite important to respect when, I mean, to, when we want to, to grow plants a, a, aquaponically. I've tried to use a, a fish pond and pump the water from there, and actually the nutrient content was not optimum because we had too much water to deal with and also there is some issues in in uh, cleaning the fish pound so we want all the fish waste to get moved out of the fish tanks and going through the filtration system so we need uh, I mean the the optimum uh, shape is a round a round shape of a specific site it's just the the rule of hydraulics it's uh, it's so what we what we de design uh, the the equipment that we've been designing are actually self cleaning and we are moving the water continuously so inside the fish tanks the water is is continuously moved and and then uh, that movement is actually uh, focusing all the fish waste to where the sucking point is of the, the of the water out of the fi fish tanks so I, I would say it's, it's better to have a specifically designed uh, place to host the fish. Thank you. Yep. Uh, can I ask what do you use uh, on the foliage for pests? Well, we we always work in in. Uh, I mean, we we always we prefer to work in greenhouses uh, and enclosed greenhouses. So pest is not. Uh, we we've never th had too too many problem with pest. We had some on on plants for for example uh, ro rocket or, or or kale. They're very they're attracting aphids a lot. But we we using uh, our sp our. Um, uh, I mean, we have developed a, 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 a pe pesticide. It's not really a pesticide, it's more a repellent. So it's used, uh, it's based on what we call wood vi vinegar. You know, when, when you make a charcoal, you, the liquid that, that, that you get is what we call wood vi vinegar, and it, it's actually repelled the insect. 
So, and it's kind of dry, dry them out. We also use something that is widely known in the, uh, in the aquaponic industry, it's called neem oil. Neem oil is, uh, is a type of oil that, I mean, from, from the neem tree, right? We make oil with that tree, with that plants. And uh, neem oil is not harmful to us. It's harmful for the, 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 the pest. It it's actually have, uh, it's, uh, it's affect the digestive si system of, of the pest, but it's not harmful to the people. So it's widely used. We don't use it for cooking because it's got a strong taste, but it's not harmful to, to, to us. So when we, s when we see there is a potential problem, we try to address it preventively by uh, using these two pro product, but so far we, we, we didn't have to use that much, right? It's uh, uh, only on plants that we grow outside, then we, we, we might have to use this, but it, whatever we use is not harmful for, for, e for, for the people and obviously for the fish. As Pascal said in the beginning, aquaponics doesn't even need an organic certification. You don't need that because the process itself is, is, is can, cannot be cheated. If you put anything harmful in there, you will destroy the ecosystem and you will destroy your, your production. So if you go to buy an aquaponic ve vegetable, like we have some samples of, over there, you can, be you, you can be sure that it's, you can e eat it without, uh, without any problem. There's no chemical in there. Not only chemical on the outside, but also the chemical on the inside, because if you, if you use a fer fertilizer that is based on, on harmful ke chemical, that will go inside the plant, in the stem of the plant, and that, that's even worse, you can't clean it. Uh, is, is there a potential to grow denser vegetables like their coniferous, like uh, um, broccoli and uh, uh, cabbages? Sure, we can grow anything that grows. Uh, actually, we can grow pretty much everything. We I, we have kale, but cabbage, uh, uh, yeah, any a, anything. We grow bro broccoli, we grow pepper, tomatoes. Uh, uh, in the in the lab, I even got fruits, right? Um, you can grow fl flowers as well. My colleague Deva was doing because she she was doing a lot of experience on uh, on on plants. That's 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 her job and her passion. And one time she tried r roses. She went to buy a rose tree, clean up clean up the the soil from the root, put it in the aquaponics, and the plant started to to die or to you know die uh, slow. Lost she the the plant lost all the flowers, and then uh, within within a week the plant started to grow white roots again. And within a month, she had three times more flower on that plant that she had b before. So uh, not only, you know, all, all plants actually likes the aquaponics uh, fer fertilized w water. If you have a si system, I mean, what we do also in the commercial si system, and we can do it in the domestic systems as well, you can use the water coming from your aquaponic system to fertilize plants you grow in soil. They will like it. They will grow b better. But yes, you, you, you can grow any kind of plants, and uh, uh, during the, the, the years of de development, we pretty much grow yeah, bro broccoli, uh, cauliflowers, uh, pepper, uh, cucumbers, yeah. Uh, you've talked a lot about the d different types of vegetables. I wonder, are you using different types of fish? It looked like it was tilapia in the tanks. Um, they're definitely a, a vegetable eater, so uh, uh, are you experimenting with any other fish? And I, I assume the fish go to market as well, is that correct? Correct. When, I mean, in a commercial farm, about 30% of the revenue is coming from fish and 70% from plants, depending on what the, the, the way you set up the plants. The fish, you can, you can use any kind of fish. You know, the part of the nitrification process is the fish, I mean, the, we, we give protein to the fish, the protein gets converted into the fish stomach into ammoniac, and the bacteria convert ammoniac from, um, I mean from ammoniac to nitrite and nitrate, and the plants use that is the N of the NPK. So also in the fish food, you, you, you have potassium, you have magnesium, you have all the other elements that the plant needs. So what is important is not actually the fish, it's more the fish food that you give. It, it, it's a process where you enter fish, 
uh, sorry, fish food, and then you get the v vegetable. So what's important is really the quality of the fish food that you give. The fish, we've been using tilapia because it's a strong, robust, they, they work well in high temperature like we have here. Uh, in the farm in Kuala Lumpur, we use jade perch also. Jade perch is a great, great fish coming from, from Australia and it's, it's unfortunately, we don't have access to jade perch in Thailand yet. I hope it will come soon. Uh, in colder country, you, you use uh, rainbow trout, you use uh, all kinds of trout. I'm actually uh, planning to very soon do a, do a test with rainbow trout in the lab here. Because the, the lab that I've built, we have the ability to control temperature of the air, temperature of the wa water. So I'm going to try to do some tests on the, with, the, with the rainbow trout, which is even a more higher value added for, for the market, right? How Salmon? do you handle the cold weather in your newest development? In Ukraine, yes. That was a challenge. Uh, we need to heat, heat up the, the greenhouse. The aquaponics system works well between, I'd say, the minimum would be 12 degrees C. 15 is optimum. It works well between 15 and 25. So in hot country, like where we are here, we, we control the temperature down to 25. And in cold country, we need to warm up the, the, the t t temperature up to tw 25. So that's why it's some, I mean, we, th there's two options. Either you build a greenhouse and you use the sunlight, but you need to cool down or wa warm up because the, your environment is not very well insulated. Or you do it indoors with grow lights. We're in a place where it's easier to, to, to maintain the temperature but you need the grow lights. So either way, the system that we've been developing, um, uh, we, we, we want to be in control of the climate, right? For two reasons, we want to grow all year long, nonstop. We want to be protected from the w weather con condition, but we, we want to, to be able to control the climate so we can grow whatever we want, whenever we want. So for that, we use some energy and because we want to be zero carbon foot footprint, we use solar panels to, uh, to, to address our en en energy needs. Like here in the farm that we're pl planning, there's going to be solar panels that's going to feed the climate control system. So the beauty of that is when it's hot outside, sunny, the solar panels deliver a lot of solar en energy. The air conditioning are using that or the, the, the water temperature control system. So it's a, it's a good it, it, it works in a very well in a in a, in a good uh, symbiotic environment, solar panels and uh, climate control. So we we do that. And we in the club would like to thank our speakers. Come up, Pascal, with a big round of applause. Thank you. And if you have any other question, please feel free. Yeah, uh, you're going to hang around for a while. I know you have a business to run and stuff. We do have another speaker, of course, uh, but I hope you'll stay and listen to the speaker and then be available for more questions outside. By the way, I have a question. Um, what is the minimum investment you're looking for? Well, we're the, the, first, the phase one I saw before is about 7 million baht, and the second phase is about 14 million baht. So, but I mean, how many do you, are you looking for a minimum investment from individuals of a hundred thousand baht or something like that? No, uh, this is quite complicated to have. A <laughs> to Ask him that question outside. Just one say to say, I forgot. So here you have on the table there some samples of this aquaponic salad. Please take it, taste it. We even have some vinaigrette. And if you want to visit a live farm in Thailand, we started with the HH uh, Foundation. You know, Human Health Foundation in YI, they have an aquaponic system, and soon in Bang Saleh. And that system will be expanded. Uh, we started that uh, si system for the foundation last year, and they're so happy with it that they, they're already requesting some, some extension for it. Uh, I, I want to say that I knew what aquaponics was because I came to a talk here in 2019 that was on aquaponics. So uh, those, where were you guys in 2019 that you weren't here learning about aquaponics? So, uh, but hey, we've got a record attendance here, post-COVID record attendance of like over uh, something like 110 people. So aquaponics is a popular thing, a popular topic to learn about. 
And you can see why, because apart from anything else, the saving in just, you know, transporting... I, I believe uh, in McDonald's, in Thailand, every lettuce leaf you have is flown in from, a, like, another country. It's, it's frightening when you think about that in terms of uh, the, you know, impact on the environment. So, Pascal, another thank you for another wonderful talk. And Regis, thank you. Come close for the big photo. That was great. And oh, just to plug the health hut, you really want to come, go on the website, go to the PCEC uh, channel on YouTube and have a listen to Pascal's wonderful talk on better nutrition. 